Welcome to Proclaiming Justice, a podcast from PJTN that focuses the light of truth on vital issues in today's headlines that impact every American. I'm your host, Laurie Cardoza Moore, founder and president of Proclaiming Justice to the Nations, and I'm here to educate, motivate, and activate you to action. I want to arm you with the truth and the facts you'll need to fight and preserve our constitutional republic and uphold the Judeo-Christian values our nation was founded upon. Welcome to Proclaiming Justice, a PJTN podcast, and I'm your host, Laurie Cardoza-Moore. If you missed the last episode of this podcast, you will find it and our previous podcast lineup on our website at pjtn.org, as well as all the other platforms that you use to access your favorite podcasts. On this week's podcast, I have invited Dr. Sandra Alfonsi back to Proclaiming Justice to update our watchmen about the rise of anti-Semitism and anti-Semitic propaganda in textbooks, library books, and instructional materials in K-12 education. I also want to remind our audience that as a PJTN watchman, it is our biblical duty to listen and share this and all of our previous podcasts with your family and friends so that they can take action against the issues that threaten our republic and the state of Israel. So please remember to like and share. Okay, so Dr. Alfonsi is back on our Proclaiming Justice podcast. And ladies and gentlemen, those of you who've been following PJTN Proclaiming Justice, you are very familiar with Dr. Alfonsi. And those of you who are members of PJTN know that Dr. Alfonsi is our senior academic advisor at PJTN. And she really is the the machine behind this whole initiative of education. And we are blessed to have her on our team. Dr. Alfonsi, welcome back to Proclaiming Justice. Thank you, Lori. It's a pleasure to be here as always. It's it's really an honor to work with you and to work with PJTN on the subjects on Israel and anti-Semitism. So thank you for having me back. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, before we get started and we we delve into the education, the the indoctrination that is still going on in America's classrooms, can you give us an update on what's going on in Israel? We know that you're in the heart of Jerusalem and Israel is still at war. There are we here in the United States, those of us who are Zionists and pro-Israel are very frustrated with our own administration and the policies that they have taken and the pressure they're putting Israel on to divide the land of Israel when Israel is at war. And so, Dr. Alfonsi, can you give our audience an update on what's going on in Israel and how do we make sense of all of it? I'll try my best. I don't think we can make sense of it. Um, I usually try not to say anything negative about the United States because it is my country, as as is Israel. However, the problems that we have over here are being put to a magnitude of of stress. Uh, President Biden and the administration Mm-hmm. And basically, to be very honest, um, the hand of Barack Obama is not only in this war, it's mixing in this, to this war. Mm-hmm. And it's very dangerous for us over here because this war will not be over within a month's time. The, the prognosis is a year, but maybe more than a year. But mm-hmm. the pressure is being put on Israel to withdraw its troops from Gaza to withdraw the troops from the border of Lebanon. And we have a major problem because we also have hostages that are still being held in Gaza. And there is the organization that is called NOW, Free to Free the Hostages Now. Um, they are basically an anti-government, our government. They, they demand that everything be stopped, that the war be ended, bring home the the, the um, hostages, and that's it. And the United States, the government, the administration, is basically firing that movement and giving it fuel to function. 
at the same time, Biden, President Biden made a decision to uh, place sanctions against four young Israelis, teenage Israelis, whom he refers to as settlers. And I think that mm -hmm. we have to clarify the language because they are not settlers. They they live within, they live in Judea, Samaria, Yehuda Shamran, which is a part of the state of Israel. And uh, yet he has not done anything to put sanctions on the the terrorists. It's just mm -hmm. to go to the settlers and to, to make this war more difficult. The, the war is very difficult, Lori. It's very painful because the, of the number of losses in the Israeli Defense Force, the losses, those, we, we do know we have a number of those who have been killed, but there's not anything written up about the close to 2,000 that are wounded that will be, they already have been diagnosed as permanently disabled. The mm -hmm. 9,000, close to 9,000 Israelis who have been moved from their homes in the Golan because of the the war with Lebanon, with Hezbollah, and there are hundreds of thousands that have been removed from the south that are, yes, they are being housed in our hotels and the government is paying for it, but their lives are a shamble. Mm. And it's very difficult because our government itself, we, we elected a right-wing government. However, it is a coalition government and the coalition with the coalition, with the, the leftists, with the those who will do anything to destroy Prime Minister Netanyahu, even if it means to take the country down with it. And mm -hmm. we have those who are very strong leftists. We have the hand of Ehud Barak. We have all of that money that is brought up, that actually paid for the demonstrations in Balfour, the demonstrations in Tel Aviv, and that are now funding the two different organizations, which are actually going back to infiltrating the army to doing damage there. It's mm. very, very complicated, Lori. It's very painful because the country has been divided for between the, the religious and the what they are, the secular. And the, it is actually the highest, almost the highest percentage of deaths right now. And they're not just in the, they're, they're in the reservists as well as in the regular army, but a lot of the best of the best commanders. And they, it's a high percentage of the, of the Orthodox community that are giving their lives and that they are extraordinary fighters. And those are the ones that at the same time, the leftists are, are uh, criticizing and are making, are making it very difficult here. So mm. the, I would say that we have tremendous problems within because there are families of the hostages that are trying to tell the families of the rest of the families of the hostages that no, they can't do that, that, that our, our children, the, of the, the soldiers, they, they have not died to give it to for any purpose, they are dying to try to bring back the hostages. But there are many of the families of the hostages that just want the war to end and bring the hostages, and it doesn't matter what happens with the war. Mm. Mm. And the other families that disagree with that. And then there are a lot of people that are criticizing Prime Minister Netanyahu for not being strong enough and not really the, the war that we were, we were waging in Gaza and such is extraordinary. It was extraordinary, this force of it. The the maneuvers are, are very well done. And yet they want to put an end to that and just bring the hostages home. And regardless of everything, don't bother with the destruction of Hamas, which means that mm -hmm. we lost 21 soldiers the other day. And that They were there fighting, but what they were doing was to create, they were building a buffer zone so that the people from the kibbutzim in the south would have a strong buffer zone against while the war is still going on and when the war is finished. Mm -hmm. and they were 
they were bringing down two buildings and Hamas knew that they were there and sent a rocket into the tank. The tank exploded, the two buildings exploded because they were laying the bombs inside. And we lost 21 beautiful soldiers who were there because the state of Israel wants to build a buffer zone so that the kibbutzim and the people there will be safe. And then they have to address the issue of what they will do in the Golan. Mm -hmm. Very painful because I was not, I mean, it's hard to say it this way. When the United States came with the pledge of the armaments and weapons that we needed, I, I, I openly asked the question, at what cost, what mm. kind of trap are they putting down for Israel? And it's apparent. They put down, look, they're giving tanks, they're giving this and that. Now they, they are fighting that not to give any funding to Israel at all. Mm -hmm. And they've done a lot. They are doing morale-wise tremendous damage, but they're also doing physical damage. And the battle that's going on in the Congress right now just they, they they threatened basically Israel was threatened with no additional ammunition. Now, how do you fight a war without the additional ammunition? And one one item slipped out, and I think it's important, and I talk about it here. It the truth of why were those 21 soldiers trying to build the barrier themselves? Why were why were they the tank was there to protect them. Why were they putting the ammunition? Were they putting the grenades and such and inside so that they could blow up the buildings? And why wasn't the Air Force, why didn't the Air Force come in first with its bombs and clear the whole area? And that we, they may have been some soldiers killed. That's one thing, but there would not have been 21 soldiers sacrificed. And mm -hmm question was answered that Israel is afraid that it's going to run out of bombs and so they did not use the bombs necessary oh my gosh. to send the Air Force in to what they have done from the beginning of the ground maneuvers in Gaza was mm. the Air Force cleared the way and then the tanks came in. In this case, they sent the tanks with the soldiers to bring down those two structures. Mm. So this is what's happening and the Hezbollah now is threatening. I mean, we are at war with Hezbollah. How big the war will be is what the issue is. And mm. what is going on with Gaza, Gaza plays like, it's like the cat cat and mouse. So they don't, you know, they're, they're, our soldiers have done a tremendous job, their job, which is their job. And they, they've destroyed so much ammunition and captured so much ammunition. So mm. periodically, Gaza, we don't get any rockets. Mm. And then the, we get the warnings like Friday morning, we got the warnings here from the high command saying that as the Sabbath approaches, you know that Gaza shoots. They, they wait for the Sabbath. And so the rulings came out. If you live within, down in the, in the Gaza Strip, you you really should not go to synagogue or you have to make sure that the synagogue has the safe, the safe room and, and such. And then in the middle, and then the same thing holds for the Golan, but in the middle and, it, and Jerusalem is in that corridor, we, we could go out, we could do everything, we can have you know, educational programs and such. However, the rabbinate has given the, the, the approval, the halakha approval that you are to carry your weapons. They have to be carried in synagogue. They are to be carried wherever you go. The If the synagogue does not have uh, a shelter, then they're recommending that those synagogues not hold services or do it like they did during COVID and get the rabbinic approval to do it by Zoom. So mm -hmm. the fact that we haven't had, and here in Jerusalem, we haven't had for over a month rockets it doesn't minimalize the fear because we know that we can, but we also know that whenever they aim at Tel Aviv, so it was quiet for a while, now they're targeting Tel Aviv, they're targeting the central, that is very, very clear sign. 
to us in Jerusalem that we are in this pathway and where are they getting? No one wants to answer these questions, but the, the, <clears throat> the families of the hostages and the families of the soldiers put together an organization whereby they would go and halt the humanitarian aid uh, trucks at the Karim, at Sh <coughs> Karim Shalom, Shalom Karen, the, um, the, the divider with, with Egypt, and mm -hmm. they, they were going to stop it. And the government pressured, our government, pressured by the United States, has banned them and has sent in the army to go against our own people who all they are doing is demanding that the trucks not be sent through, that mm. the trucks need to be, need to be checked because mm. first of all, the Gazans have been saying that, that the humanitarian trucks with the food, the Hamas takes them and even shoots, their, shoots the Gazans trying to go to get the food. Mm. So the other thing which we found, we, when I say we being Israel, what they found is that those trucks also have weapons. And in, in some that have, were checked before this last period had, had Hamas fighters in them. That's how they're replenishing because of the thousands that have been arrested and those that have been killed, they're, they're not running out of fighters and they're not running out of rockets. So mm. the, the, this is part of the damage that, that the Biden administration has done it's put such such force and such on on Netanyahu and our people don't understand that we can't even say he's caught between the rock and the hard place. He's caught he's caught between the devil and the devil's minions. This is mm. not Amalek. I mean that we talk about Amalek, but right. my is is that Hamas or is that also the 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 leftists? Is it also the the is it also the Biden administration? Is it also Obama? I mean, we have a lot of enemies all who are, they're, they're all focused on the same goal, which is the destruction of this country. And now, and now it's been, I don't, I can say it's more than a rumor because we, we have it here in many places that Biden is going to declare a Palestinian state. Now, I'm not too sure how he's going to do it, but the United Kingdom said the same thing, but I'm more concerned that the United States is going to come into a sovereign nation and declare that land uh, a Palestinian state. And mm. the problem is that, that Gaza, in Gaza belongs to Egypt, but Gaza before it belonged to Egypt is a part of what Yitzhak Shamir named greater Israel, just as you have greater Syria, all of that at one time. <clears throat> so Gaza belonged, Gaza has a long Jewish history. And now, mm. What, what Biden also has demanded is that there to be no Jewish settlements. And the day after the war is over, I think I laugh when I read this, the day after, they think that everybody is going to go, okay, this is the day, it's over now, let's put down our guns and it's over. It's not ending that way. It can only end in a terrible, terrible, God forbid, conflagration in Israel. It's going to end when Hamas is wiped out and the Israel's been forbidden to take out any of the Hamas leaders abroad in their targeted assassinations. Things that the United States did over in the Middle East, now the, the laws for Israel to protect itself have been changed. And we're suffering from that because the Israelis are not backing by Prime Minister Netanyahu on two different ways. There are those that are leftists that want L Lapid, who's excused the vulgarities, in bed with them. And they they want some, or on the other hand, they want someone who is stronger than Netanyahu, but they don't want, we don't have it. We don't have that because by the <clears throat> Prime Minister Netanyahu not only is very fine in the military. He happens to be a diplomat and he knows where the pressures are <clears throat> and he's walking a tightrope and I think mm -hmm. he's doing very well, but 
he's not going to be able to do it much longer because of the pressure when Blinken comes, when all of these come over, everything, the pressure put on him by the United States. If we do what should be done, we're going to be in a direct conflict with a superpower, which is the United mm. States. <clears throat> and also the call to end all the funding. It's a very bad time in the middle of a war to contemplate that, to contemplate it, but it is not so bad. Like we asked some, some of us were talking and it's, I don't think it's a stupid question, Lori, and I think people are beginning to ask it. Why do we have to purchase rockets? Why can't we build our own rockets? And, and the government, those that are not left wing has to consider that Israel, Israel builds planes that are then bought by the United States and then sold back to Israel, which is, the, you know, <clears throat> it's stupid, but it tells you at the bottom, at the end of the day, if Israel would reconsider and build its own materials for waging this war, we would in fact be able to walk away from the United States, which is not such a bad idea. No, so that, absolutely not. Over here. That's what's going on over here. It's, mm. it's very painful to be an American right now <clears throat> and watch this. And then it's even more painful to be an American watching America, like the, the, when we lost our Marines and we lost our from the army and we were losing and there's not been a statement by by our government and then when you know Biden thinks it's saying don't do it that that <laughs> it doesn't mean anything at all but he comes comes back and warns warns Iran and Iraq that warns them and gives them plenty of time before he said you know so that they can get their leadership Iran can get their leadership out of out of Iraq and that and why would you do that? You know, it, it makes it makes the United States look feeble, but it makes no one will ever believe in the strength of our nation again. And to be honest, I don't know how many of us really do, because to have a government like that is something mm -hmm. which I find I find very very questionable. And the then we look at little by little. One one program I do get over here. It's always one like one day in arrears, but I, I do get Fox News. And <clears throat> I don't care what people say about some of it goes a little bit left. If you if you look in between and you don't listen to the comics, you listen to those that are just telling you what is going on, the pictures and the information about the, the migrants, the information about the about the the soldiers, all of that makes me look at, at my country and I say, and this is, it is my country, but it's, it is being destroyed. And then when we do our work together, you and I, and we go through <clears throat> K through 12, and I think we have something very special doing K through 12 because wrongly so, most people put the blame on academia. Well, academia had the brains to bring Marxism over, but where we have to understand is that this problem that you and I are fight, fighting and what we're doing, it didn't start up in academia and then make its way down. It was mm -hmm. planted like seeds in the in the lower level. And what we we listen to these things and we're saying, you know, George Soros this and this one that, but K through 12. If you and I, what we've done together and the research in that, we know that the first perpetrators of in the indoctrination and going after the destruction of America was Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. That was money put in. Everyone now that people are so knowledgeable, they're saying, oh, Qatar, Qatar, oh, they, they came in after five years of Saudi money and continuing, but right. Saudi master plan. All of these things, and then over here in Israel, I'm looking at. I, I look at what has been spawned: the hatred, the anti-Semitism in the United States right now against Israel. And I look at the fact that Israel has never 
fought to correct this. It has never, it has the worst left-wing academia and yet it flourishes because <laughs> that's the misconception of the word mm -hmm. democracy. So yeah, people, that's people. where we are and it's, Lori, it's very, very dangerous here. It's, it's very sad. It's, it's not anything that, to be honest, that I was prepared for because I've told you this before that the history of Israel, I know I've studied and I, I know it inside out, but you have to live here and watch it to see October the 7th will be, will, it's like, I will never forget it because I didn't learn it from a book or from a television program. I'm here. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what it is. It's, it's to watch the destruction of the United States. And I'm just hoping that the migrant crisis will be the implement to bring out <clears throat> the Americans. And the mm. fact that I think now 23 states are backing Governor Abbott of Texas and mm. sending people here, as there, I think that it, it gives me a little bit of courage because I said, I said, you know, if you finally get through to the Americans, mm -hmm. it's, there. it's just, <laughs> it's just very hard to get through to the Americans because we weren't raised to believe in evil. Mm. And that's something which now when faced by evil, the power of the church and the power of the synagogue, but especially the church, because they do a lot more speaking about evil and, and punishment and retribution and such. One thing we haven't done and we're not doing is to actually, to create the realization that we are given the choice between right and wrong. And mm -hmm. that doesn't only to say, well, I'm gonna be a good person, that's it. No, the choice between right or wrong is to choose right means to fight evil. And that's mm -hmm. what, the message should be. And that's mm. what Israel, Israel is right now. Lori, it, it's, it is something that, it is a pain that doesn't go away. Mm. Doesn't go away. Well, let me encourage you, Sandra, that Americans and what we're seeing happen at the border right now, watching the convoys, the truck, truck convoys, and not just the 18-wheeler truckers. There are convoys of... Um, of vehicles that are joining with these truckers and are going to Texas, they're going to Arizona, they're going to California to send a message that the 25, that they're in agreement with the 25 states that are standing with Texas against this administration, against their policies. I will tell you, and I won't say what state, but I had a state legislator contact me to because they know about our relationship with Israel and the work that we're doing. And he called me to tell me that they have a weapons manufacturing plant. And it's men in and, and it's all legit. But he told me to tell the Israelis that if there's a distributor over here in the United States that will distribute weapons and ammunition to Israel, he will sell his products. He will sell his ammo. He will sell his his um, weapons to Israel at their cost. These are the types of people that Americans are. We love Israel. And yes, we have a problem with anti-Semitism in our country. We've had a problem for a long time, but many people are waking up. They're looking at the reality of what's happening. They're looking at the propaganda that their children are being subjected to. And people are rising up and saying enough is enough. It is outrageous that we are sitting here on this podcast right now. I'm very upset listening to what you have shared. We know that the, that the Biden administration with Obama are putting the, the squeeze to Israel. This administration has no right to speak 
on behalf of the American citizens and say that that Israel has to divide its sovereign state. It is none of our business. Our business as a country, as a republic, is to protect and defend other republics, other democracies. And unfortunately, this administration is is working against the only true democracy in the Middle East, the only nation where people of different faiths, of different um, backgrounds can live in the land in Israel and live there safely and have the government protect their rights. And for our government to go in and tell Israel, you have to show restraint, you've got to tie your hands behind your back to fight this war, no, President Biden. This is why people, more and more people, are looking to new leadership come November. And we all know who that leadership is going to be. Americans are are not, yes, God willing, Americans are not going to tolerate this. We can't allow our children to be subjected to this because this is the garbage that our kids are going to, to study and read about in their textbooks, in their instructional materials. And and you know, Dr. Alfonso, I have to tell you, we're going to, the time for this interview is almost up and we're going to have to have you come back on because there is so much Why don't more. We talk some more about Israel and the next podcast as quickly as you want to do it. We'll do the textbooks because there are a couple of issues that I think your your listeners and your members have to understand that I've gotten a feeling for over here because mm-hmm. what happens here happens in America and vice versa. Yes. It, only it isn't only divide <clears throat> divide the land it isn't only stop the fighting it, there's something else that we have to understand that the administration the united states has challenged israel's morality and this is something which we need to discuss and we have to understand that when you when one challenges the morality of a person and one challenges the morality of a nation state, it does in effect put the onus of evil on the person whose morality is being challenged. Mm -hmm. This is what's happening. What is happening in Israel is that the question is being asked, well, what about what about the safety of the Gazans? What about the Palestinian people? Mm-hmm. Where is the morality in Israel? And then they question, they've questioned, and Biden does it and Blinken does it. The morality of Israel, the morality of the people, it's one thing. But Lori, they are attacking the morality of the IDF, of the Israel Defense Forces, which I heard Richard Kemp make a beautiful, beautiful speech the other day that no matter how far back in history we look, and I saved I saved the speech, no matter how far back we look in the history of Israel and in the history of warfare around the world, it is only the army, the IDF, and inclusive the, the Air Force and the the whole idea that mm-hmm. they are the most moral defense force, the most moral army that warfare has ever seen. Mm. He went on to speak about that, and I was thinking, wow. well, that that is what exactly what Biden is attacking about when they make their statements you, that Israel does not do enough to prevent the civilian casualties. Israel doesn't care about civilian casualties. Israel wants to destroy the Palestinian people. People, mm-hmm. in, people in our government ought to know that mm-hmm. Gazans are not Palestinians. I mean, but that that's a discussion that <clears throat> I haven't lost it yet, but I've gotten to the point where I just sort of shrug because the Gazans are not Palestinians because Gaza was not part 
of the Palestinian, the English, the, the British mandate. Right. But what, what Biden and what Lincoln and what all of them are saying and, the, and those on the left are saying, it is to attack the morality of mm -hmm. the idea. And that is being thrown into the faces of, the, of, the, uh, of our soldiers. And it is, it is so very false. And mm. we look when we look at if you look at Syria, if you look at Iraq, if you look at Yemen, and you look at the, how they kill their own people, right? And look at the Gazans and the Hamas. Hamas, we there are videos of them shooting the Gazan people who are running trying to get some of the food, or shooting the Gazans who were trying to get out of the way. And go to and go to the border, and hopefully Egypt would let them in. But the morality of Israel's IDF, we do the most possible. And people laugh, not laughing that it's funny. With <clears throat> it's called knocking on the roofs. That mm -hmm. before before we bomb, we notify, we make phone calls, we set, we put pamphlets out. We notified the population. We we built in the middle of the of the bombing in Gaza. <clears throat> what did the IDF do? They built a safe road for mm. the Gazans who had to flee, and they were they they fled in between Israeli tanks, Israeli tanks on mm. both sides of the road that were protecting them. And then Blinken comes in, and Biden says, and that. That that we don't care about civilian deaths that we've killed thousands upon thousands. First of all, the number of Gazans that have been killed, nobody knows or ever will know because of the the medical <coughs> the, the 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 reports from the the health their health department and such. Mm -hmm. This is something which Israel is Israel is born from the Torah. Israel has intrinsic laws, intrinsic laws of morality, and mm -hmm. the, the leftists are doing their best to do with a way with it. Wokeism has played havoc and is playing havoc with it in mm. the United States and is now mm -hmm. playing with the intrinsic uh, morality that comes from the Torah, that comes from religion. And <clears throat> the Christian Arabs are going through the same phenomenon that that they've been driven out. Nobody, you know, I, I was right. spoke to someone the other day and from from the evangelicals, one of well actually from one of the very religious from in Texas. And she said, what do you mean? That I said, why do you think that nine from 90% Christian, Bethlehem was 90% Christian and there are about 10% Christians left? Mm -hmm. I, they weren't killed. I said they were. They were chased out. They ran for their lives. I said if anybody even talks about Nazareth, I mm -hmm. said this is this is what we're we're living through, and this is what is being done. Mm -hmm. And this, we're fighting on so many fronts, Lori. That that people when you, when we think about fighting, we think about the army marching in, and we think about you know. When you get up in the morning, how many died overnight? And then the reports started coming out from Hadassah and other hospitals on the number of the wounded, mm. because they've managed to to you know they it doesn't go anywhere. But when they're already up in the in the thousands who will be permanently disabled, the loss of limbs and this from mm. all and on top. The morality of this country is being shredded, and that plays right into the hands of the leftists that are godless, that are Marxists and communists, and it plays into the hands of of the the Muslims, the, the Islamic Muslims that follow the Quran, that believe that we're infidels, and the United States that now is serving up pornography. Mm -hmm on a golden platter and the United States, which now has sex trafficking of children and that they they are telling us in Israel that we have no morality 
I mean, that is that we have to understand. I find that it's I can't, outrageous. you know, I can't do anything to physically help, but I'm trying to help the morale, not morally, but the morale. I'm trying to, to talk about it, to write things. And, and the importance is that you and your watchmen have to know, and I'm asking them and I'm asking you, that it's not just the war that you have to, we have to watch. We have to watch the demoralization. We have to watch the loss of, that they say in, in Hebrew, koach, the loss of the strength. It's mm. not physical strength, Lori. There's a loss of, of the strength just because when the United States turns against us, it opened up the whole story of Franklin Delano Roosevelt and his lies about the Holocaust. And we have no idea how many deaths of Jews could have been prevented. It opens up this whole question on why is it the, why is it the Jews and why is it Israel? And the answer comes out from like what you say, the Torah came out from Zion. Mm -hmm. And that's the strength and the, the attack on our morality is that it's really something that I never, it's one thing when we talk about anti-Semitism, but to talk about the immorality of the IDF, that really it's the, when, when Richard Kemp said that it's the only, it's the only armed forces, the only army in the world, it's the most moral one in the history of, of, of warfare. And mm -hmm. I thought, to him and I said, let me read this thing when it comes out because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't just, you know, you, you, I get carried away if I hear five nice words, I want to make sure I understood it. Yeah. But, yeah. but yeah. The thing about Obama, the thing about Obama, he came out with a statement saying that yes, October the 7th was terrible, but it is Israel that's the oppressor. How, so he doesn't How understand. Dare he. How dare he? It's none of his business. He needs to close his mouth and go about his personal business because he's no longer the president of the United States and he no longer speaks for us. Who can define, who can define mm. over the 7th as being horrific and link it to Israel is mm -hmm. the oppressor? Therefore, yeah. if, you are, if you and I do our famous therefores, it comes right back. Israel was the is mm -hmm. oppressor. Therefore, October the 7th came about because we are the oppressor and it, res it is in this war <sighs> that is destroying all of these innocent Gazans and then the Palestinians who are <clears throat> one thing that that your I want your your listeners and your members to know is that we have a body, I don't know, that's the best word, a body of Israeli Arabs who are citizens, who are loyal to Israel, who love Israel and are very outspoken about it. And we have to understand what's, what, they, what danger they are placing themselves in <clears throat> with their families, with Hamas, with the Palestinians and such. <clears throat> and it is, the society here is so splintered and it reflects everywhere. Like I, I'm saying, honestly, I have, I, I don't know exactly how to communicate with my Arab doctor. And he's a very good doctor. It isn't even that, but it's like, we look at each other in the eyes to try to find out how, how well we're, we're balanced. And we're very well balanced. I, I respect him and he respects me and I like him. But the, the, the word friendship no longer exists in my vocabulary. It's really acquaintanceship and it works that way on the other side too. Mm -hmm. the, there's a question mark about everything now. And this is, this is why Israel must win this war. It must. Yes. Destroy what is destroying us, or we will be destroyed. 
so th that's what that's where we are. But the allegations against our our IDF, Lori, they 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 anger me so because they die. They are dying not in order not to hurt right. civilians. So yeah. it's that's where we are now with this war. That's where everything is. Well, we need to launch a, an initiative to mobilize Americans across the country to contact their congressmen and tell them to tell Biden to stand down. He does not represent we the people of the United States of America and our policies, not his leftist Secretary of State's policies. So, Dr. Alfonsi, we we are out of time and I'm going to have you come back on next week. We're going to continue this conversation. This is so very important, how it ties into education. But ladies and gentlemen, you know, I, I hope you found what Dr. Alfonsi shared um, shocking and informative. PJTN was and painful. established. Lori, ask them to find it painful. They have to find it painful. It has to reach into our souls. What you said has to permeate our souls because this is the reality of what America, Israel's greatest ally, is doing to our, our friend. This should not be, ladies and gentlemen. We, we're going to post this podcast, and I need your help. You need to send this podcast to all your family and friends. We have to educate Americans about the threat that our Jewish brethren are facing. When a state legislator will call me up and say, I have a weapons ammunition plant, manufacturing plant, I will send the, the weapons and I will send the ammo to Israel at our cost. If, you, if there's a distributor that I can work through, I have never had anybody contact me about that. But this is, the, these, this is who America is. This is who we are. We're loyal to our friends. We stand with our friends, just like we're standing with Governor Abbott at the border of Texas. We, the people of America, stand with our friends and our allies. And now is the time. Our Jewish brethren are feeling demoralized. They're feeling attacked. They have no place to turn because with America, with this administration putting pressure on Israel to divide the land that God calls his. And you all, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard me talk about this. If you're new to PJTN, we are totally 100% against dividing the land of Israel. God made a covenant, an eternal covenant with Israel. He would be their God. He will make them like the stars of the heavens and the sands on the, on the seashore. And all the land he was showing Abraham, he's giving it to their descendants forever. That means today. And if we, the people, allow our government to divide the land of Israel, to put these kind of restraints on Israel as she's being attacked by her enemies, ladies and gentlemen, those enemies are coming to your door. Mark my word. Eye for eye. As it's done to Israel, so will it be done to America. God is not going to stand by and allow this to go on without justice being executed. As PJTM Watchmen, we have a biblical mandate to stand against the ungodly, rising Nazi threat that is destroying this nation and other Western nations and threatening our Judeo-Christian values, and promoting anti-Semitism, and threatening the nation-state of Israel. We cannot remain silent, ladies and gentlemen. God warned the prophet Ezekiel about the responsibility of the watchman. And if we remain silent, then there's judgment that's going to come. God told the prophet Obadiah in the last days he was going to wipe out the descendants of Edom because they stood by while their brother Jacob was held in captivity, and they did nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot stand by. 
You as a watchman can sound the alarm and warn others just by simply sharing this podcast with your family and friends and inviting them to come back on next week's podcast when we talk to Dr. Alfonsi about the indoctrination, the anti-American, anti-Israel propaganda that our children are being subjected to, that, ha- that they have, that have been subjected to for several decades now. But please share and like this podcast to help us sound the the alarm in your community. Remember Dietrich Bonhoeffer reminded us, silence in the face of evil is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. So don't forget to join us for next week's podcast as we continue this conversation about combating the rise of anti-Semitism and taking back local control of our communities, our children's education, and our nation. I want to also remind you that if you have not signed up to become a PJTM Watchman, you can help support this mission through our award-winning documentaries and Focus on Israel programs, as well as more programs just like this one for just $20 a month. So go to our website at pjtn.org to watch our programs and listen to our recent podcast. With your generous monthly donation, you can ensure that PJTN remains on the front lines and in the headlines, but we can't do it without your faithful prayers and financial support. I hope that you will prayerfully consider supporting our mission as we educate to activate Jews, Christians, and all people of conscience to stand on the front lines of this all-encompassing war. God bless you and thank you for all you do on behalf of our Jewish brethren the state of Israel, and these United States. Thank you again for joining me on this edition of Proclaiming Justice. Please share this podcast with your family and friends. For more information about how you can get involved, please visit our website at pjtn.org. As a PJTN watchman, you can help us keep up the fight to preserve our freedom for our children and their children for such a time as this.